Let me thank you all for being here. Um, and I know some of you are here for a dual purpose. Some uh, may be um, uh, particularly focused in one area or the other. So let me uh, kind of lay out what's going to happen this morning. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about uh, an announcement with regard to uh, the Philadelphia Gas Works. Uh, we will go through that entire process. And then if there are subsequent questions, we'll have a slight break. If there are subsequent questions with regard to uh, last night and today's uh, storm, I'll be glad to answer those uh, questions and give you an update on uh, that uh, uh, weather event uh, after uh, today's announcement. Uh, I have a long list of folks that I need to uh, recognize, uh, but first and foremost, uh, let me uh, acknowledge and introduce uh, to Philadelphia to my left. You'll hear from him shortly, uh, Mr. Jim Torgerson, President and CEO of UIL. They say that, of course, success has uh, many parents, and that is certainly true here. Uh, we could not have arrived at this day without the incredible hard work, focus, and effort of many, many people. And so let me start by first thanking Craig White, President and CEO, PGW, and his entire team, and most importantly, Joe Golden, Doug Moser, Abby Pazepsky, Raquel Gudsman, Dan Leonard, and Doug Oliver. I want to thank them and the entire PGW team. David Seltzer, who I know is over to the side, is the chair of the PFMC board. I want to thank David and all the PFMC uh, board members. Everett Gillison, our chief of staff and deputy mayor for public safety. Shelley Smith, city solicitor. Rhina Cutler, deputy mayor for transportation and utilities. Rob DeBeau, finance director, city of Philadelphia. Nancy Winkler, City Treasurer, Tumar Alexander from the Mayor's Office, Chris Carras and Jocelyn Hill from the City Law Department, Greg Seltzer, I uh, believe no relationship, and the great team at Ballard Spar. Paul DeBar, Thomas Rosen, Ben Wilson, and Eric Lane of J.P. Morgan and Loop Capital are brokers on this particular transaction who performed exceedingly well on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. George Belichick, Frank Setien, and Justin Paffreyman from Lazard, our advisors on this transaction and whose work two years ago propelled us on this particular path. And we really would not have been here today but for their thoughtful analysis and their commitment that PGW could possibly be sold. Our government relations and communications team, David Hyman, George Burrell, David Dix, Larry Seisler, and Kirk Dorn. And I want to especially thank those, uh, these individuals because they've led this effort on my behalf, on behalf of the citizens, and the taxpayers, and ratepayers, uh, and the employees. And they invested an incredible amount of time and effort managing every step of this process. And they are Dan Cantu Hersler, City Law Department. Catherine Pastor, First Deputy Finance Director, Suzanne B. Miller, First Deputy Chief of Staff, and a very special recognition for Saskia Thompson, who is the Deputy Director of Finance. Now, before I go into the details of this critically important decision for our city's future, I also want to acknowledge Mayor John F. Street, as well as Tom Knudsen, and again, Craig White. In the 1990s and well into the 2000s, PGW was in dire financial condition and came perilously close to collapse, an event that could have placed the city's own financial condition in jeopardy. Mayor Street began a process of reforming PGW, hiring Tom Knudsen as CEO, and with Tom's work and effort, and then his great successor, Craig White, they stabilized PGW and made possible the position that we're in today. In the summer of 2010, we began a very rigorous process of exploring the possible sale of the Philadelphia Gas Works, by far the largest city-owned gas company in the United States of America. From that day forward, I made it explicitly clear to everyone involved in this uh, uh, issue that we would have certain criteria that had to be met in order for us to ever seriously consider agreeing to signing off on any agreement. On February 13, 2012, many of you will recall that Lazard, our advisor, produced a study that set out some specific criteria to be required 
and conditions of any potential sale. A sale would have to benefit the taxpayers and ratepayers and customers of PGW. It would have to keep in place PGW's discount programs for low-income families and protections for our senior citizens. It had to honor existing labor contracts, and we wanted any buyer to maintain PGW's corporate headquarters in Philadelphia for at least three years. I'm very pleased today to say that the agreement of sale that we are announcing today between the city and UIL Holdings Corporation meets all of those criteria and many, many more. It will be a great outcome for our customers, for our taxpayers, and the hardworking professional employees of the Philadelphia Gas Works. The sale price is $1.86 billion, which was, in fact, the highest offer we received from any of our finalists. It's at the top end of what our financial advisor, Lazard, had actually forecast. UIL has agreed to contract terms that were vitally important to the City of Philadelphia. The company agreed to maintain dual headquarters, both here in Philadelphia and in New Haven. This agreement keeps rates frozen for three years, maintains PGW's discount programs for low-income families and our seniors, and positions PGW to take full advantage of the abundant supply of natural gas in Pennsylvania, offering our city and our region the opportunity to become the prime energy hub in the United States. And UIL will make substantial increases in investments in PGW's infrastructure at its LNG facilities in Port Richmond and throughout the city by replacing old cast iron pipes with safer modern pipe. And make no mistake, these investments will create new jobs in the city of Philadelphia, both related to the uh, local union employees at the company, as well as our building trades. We are hopeful, certainly, that when this sale closes, and after the due diligence by our Philadelphia City Council and the State Pennsylvania Utility Commission, Public Utility Commission, the city will not only be able to fully fund PGW's employee pension fund, but we will also deposit roughly between $420 million and $630 million into the city's pension fund. The state of our pension fund and the crippling effect of its obligations that they have on our city is a major concern of mine and has been for years, and it's a concern shared by many, many members of city council. It's one of the most pressing financial issues facing our city. This contribution would go a long way toward our efforts to restore the health of our city pension fund. With respect to PGW customers, the agreement keeps base rates frozen through 2017 and maintains PGW's discount programs for low-income families and seniors. And PGW's customer service centers will remain open and PGW's, PGW's call center will remain in Philadelphia. We strongly believe that the size of future potential rate increases will likely be lower under a UIL ownership than they would be under continued city ownership. And that's also good news for VGW customers who are currently paying among the highest rates in the nation. I want to offer a special thanks and recognition to the employees of PGW. They have gone to work every day and performed at the highest levels during this entire process, while at the same time hearing the talk and reading reports about the future of their company and who might possibly own it going forward. Despite having some of those uncertainties on their minds, they performed as well as ever. Union leader Keith Holmes and Craig White both deserve a significant amount of credit for their leadership at PGW. The contract signed by UIL and the city requires that all PGW employees be, an, be offered employment at UIL. There are no layoffs for three years under the terms of this agreement. If an employee decides to retire or accept a job elsewhere, that position may go unfilled, but total employment may not fall below 1,350 employees for at least three years. And let me point out that among all the finalists in the bid process, this level of employment pledged by UIL was the highest 
of any bidder. Also, pension benefits earned by employees through the sale date will be protected. What an employee has earned and vested is secure going into the future. Let me repeat that. Pension benefits earned by employees through the sale date will be protected. What an employee has earned and vested is in fact secure going into the future. A privately owned PGW will require highly skilled employees to maintain and operate this gas company and ensure that the system continues to deliver gas safely to customers and improve the gas infrastructure. Safety first must always be our mindset. Like PGW, UIL has strong relationships with the utility workers of America. And also like PGW, UIL has a highly diversified workforce and places an emphasis on contracting with minority and women-owned businesses in selecting its vendors. I have only come to know the leadership team at UIL over the past week or so, but in looking at their record in communities that they serve and spending time with Jim, I believe that UIL will be a great corporate citizen for Philadelphia. Aside from the company's outstanding business practices, UIL employees volunteer their time to civic and social service organizations in their communities. In addition, UIL contributes to charitable organizations where their customers live, and that will soon hopefully include Philadelphia. Private ownership under UIL will give PGW the ability to react quickly to market opportunities and make a greater investment in developing markets such as liquefied natural gas. UIL will also accelerate PGW's pipe replacement activities at a rapid pace. Philadelphia can and will be an energy hub with PGW at the center of it. That will be good news for PGW, for PGW customers and the city's economy, and it will in fact result in greater demand for jobs. Now that we have an agreement of sale, I look forward to City Council's deliberation on this matter. I intend to work with members of City Council to answer their questions as they arise and provide whatever information we have to help in reaching, hopefully, a positive decision. I also anticipate great interest from citizens regarding this proposed sale as well. We will do whatever it takes to get Philadelphians the information they need and deserve about this matter. We also have a website dedicated to this transaction. It is www.exploringasale.com, and you can get updates on that site. It's my firm belief that once the citizens of the city, members of city council, and many, many others have examined what this opportunity means for the future of our city, I believe a sale will, in fact, get overwhelming support. The city has owned PGW for 176 years. And as I've said before, there was a time when city ownership of a gas company made sense. I believe that time has now long passed. We are now perfectly positioned to join our peer cities that all have privately owned gas companies in their locales. And with UIL as our partner, we can realize a great potential that lies ahead for residents, businesses, and our public employees at PGW, all benefited here in Philadelphia. Let me introduce Jim. When Jim came to Philadelphia a few months ago as part of the interviewing process, everyone on our team was extremely impressed, not only with Jim, but the men and women with whom he has surrounded himself. In these recent days, as I mentioned, I've come to know him as well, and I very much share that observation. Jim, let me publicly say, welcome to the city of Philadelphia. And with that, please uh, welcome to the podium, Jim Torgerson. Well, thank you, Mayor. Really appreciate this, and we are so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Jim Torgerson. I'm the president and chief executive officer of UIL Holdings. And I really consider it a privilege to be standing here alongside Mayor Nutter and Craig White, making this really important announcement. We're honored that the city of Philadelphia has chosen our company to continue a rich heritage of providing natural gas service to the city. 
we recognize the significant responsibility that comes with being the local energy provider, and we're committed to serving our customers well and being valued members of the community. For those of you who may not be familiar with UIL, we're a New Haven, Connecticut-based diversified energy company. We presently serve more than 700,000 electric and natural gas utility customers in 66 communities across Connecticut and Massachusetts. Without a doubt, this is a very exciting moment in UIL's history. As PGW's business operations are an excellent operational and strategic fit for our company and really a natural addition to our portfolio of fully regulated utilities. Now, throughout our discussions with the city of Philadelphia, it became very clear that UIL and PGW operations share very similar cultures, including a very strong sense of service and focusing our delivery on delivering safe and reliable energy to our customers. We're committed to being engaged partner and to working with the talented workforce here to build an even stronger gas distribution operation. The transaction will include leveraging best practices across our companies to deliver high quality customer service. We also want to share our commitments to energy efficiency, low income assistance, environmental stewardship, and beyond anything, safety. Safety is paramount for any utility. And quite simply, our goal is to be a good operator, employer, and a corporate citizen in every region that we operate today. And this will be no different for Philadelphia. Now, joining UIL will provide a number of benefits for Philadelphia's gas customers, and the mayor enumerated a number of those. For the current employees, the gas customers in the city of Philadelphia, for instance, we are maintaining the current base rate structure through 2017. PGW Operations Headquarters will remain in Philadelphia, and we will also have a dual headquarters in New Haven, Connecticut, and Philadelphia for UIL Holdings Corporation. There are no planned changes to the six customer service centers around the city. And there is a potential, strongly, to accelerate the ongoing gas main and service replacement projects with 1,500 miles of cast iron pipe in the ground that need to be replaced. We want to excel, work with the Pennsylvania Commission and get that replaced. We're going to honor the collective bargaining agreement with PGW Operations Union. As the mayor said, there will be no layoffs for the first three years. And UIL has a proven track record of community involvement and plans to be a strong corporate citizen in Philadelphia. We are committed to diversity, and we will continue to support minority and women-owned businesses and we also intend to maintain the currently offered assistance programs available to customers requiring additional support. In short, uh, we think this transaction will be a win-win for all of our stakeholders and are gratified for the opportunity to serve the city of Philadelphia for many years to come. And I also want to personally thank all the people that the mayor mentioned, but especially his team, who are very professional in uh, working with, we were very happy to work with, and also my team. We had a number of people that worked very hard for quite a few months to bring this to fruition. So I want to thank all of them and especially the team here. So thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn the podium over to Craig White. Well, thank you, Jim. And uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a very unique day for Philadelphia Gas Works. And uh, we're very, very pleased. Uh, those of us who are in the energy industry, and I've been in it for 34 years, incidentally 34 years at PGW, and uh, we all know each other. And I've sat next to Jim at American Gas Association board meetings where we've advocated for local distribution companies. And I know him as uh, uh, a, uh, he's, he's a true Philadelphian, even though he never came from Philadelphia. Uh, he's hardworking, uh, he's a man of uh, highest integrity, and he has a reputation for being very fair. And I, myself, am looking forward to working with him. And I uh, very much appreciate the fact that um, his company came forward and, uh, and, and really looked at PGW. Um, now, in closing, I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention this. We wouldn't be here today if not for the employees at PGW, the management non-union. They did a spectacular job of turning this company around. And they've worked through the sale process while we're in the throes of probably the most severe winter we've seen in decades. Um, we have union personnel out there working seven days, 12 hours a day. So uh, while all this is going on, uh, we're, we're focused on the, uh, on, the, on the issue of safety and reliability. And I firmly believe that the company that's coming in here, UIL Holdings, is uh, 
uh, folks with the, uh, the same goal, and that is a safe, reliable system providing great customer service. So thank you very much, and I look forward to it. So with that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, be glad to take any uh, questions, any of us be glad to take any questions about this particular announcement. As I mentioned, if you have snow-related uh, issues, uh, we'll uh, have a break after the uh, PGW UIL uh, discussion, and we'll be glad to get into um, snow and weather. Dave. Uh, you said earlier that there was a time when it made sense for the city to own its own gas works. When and why did it stop it? Well, I wasn't here 176 years ago, so um, you know I'm sure it made a whole lot of sense uh, back then. Um, from a personal uh, standpoint, I mean, I've, uh, for myself, at least sometime during the course of my probably early time in city council, uh, back in the 90s, uh, when um, you know PGW was struggling. You recall the $45 million loan. Uh, from the city, PGW is, uh, we, the city owns the collective assets. If they struggle financially, uh, that is, uh, in fact, a significant burden uh, on the city. So I th from my perspective, I think it stopped making a lot of sense uh, for us to own a gas company, uh, which is not an essential city service. It's not a core service of a government. Um, so I, I think it stopped making a lot of sense uh, back in the 90s. Uh, which is when uh, I think some of the more serious discussions also started taking place uh, about uh, the possible sale of PGW. This is not, uh, you know, as wonderful a day it is uh, to have come this far. This is not an original idea by our administration. This is a discussion that's been going on in this city for at least 20 plus years uh, about whether or not a gas utility uh, can stand alone, uh, whether or not uh, Philadelphia uh, should maintain uh, being the largest city in the United States of America that still owns a gas company. Obviously, change has taken place over the last 20, 30 years in this, uh, in this industry. I mean, is, was the company poorly managed in part because the government owning it means that politicians get involved, there's political interference, decisions are made for the wrong reasons? Um, no, I don't think that that's, I mean, I, that's not my recollection of history. I think that um, any number of uh, decisions, changes in the marketplace, uh, the kinds of things that uh, constrain a PGW uh, in a new energy environment are just the reality of the universe. PGW is constrained in terms of its customer base. It cannot provide service outside the city of Philadelphia. It is not well positioned to take advantage of uh, many of the benefits of whether it's expansion and LNG, uh, or Marcellus Shale and what those opportunities are, as well as uh, some of the uh, strategies and tactics, uh, appropriate strategies and tactics, that are utilized uh, in uh, the private sector. And again, uh, is this a core service uh, for uh, a city uh, like Philadelphia? I think on every one of those counts, the answer is either things have changed or no. Uh, I don't think it has, quite frankly, anything to do with you know, many of the things that, uh, that, that you mentioned as reasons. I think there are true and legitimate business reasons uh, why uh, uh, this doesn't make any sense, make uh, any sense for us going forward. And as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, when you look at uh, the process uh, that Mayor Street went through in hiring Tom, subsequently uh, uh, Craig, they did, in fact, turn the company around. PGW paid back the entire $45 million. The company is more valuable today than it's probably been in 30 years. The collections are possibly, and Craig will correct me if I'm wrong, possibly at the highest level that they've been. They've brought in operational efficiencies. Uh, it is at, uh, you know, for our purposes, and I think under uh, the last 30, 40, 50 years, it's probably at the apex. Uh, of uh, operations uh, and in an environment where there is great interest uh, in the marketplace for this kind of entity, uh, this really is the time uh, to, uh, to try to move something like this forward. Vernon, you usually do. I mean, that's, that's the role that you play, so that's fine. Um, 
you know, uh, you know, I try to maintain a certain sense of optimism uh, every day. Uh, that, but there is a process, and it does take some time. Um, I think, and there are enough people in here to absolutely to uh, to correct me uh, on this one. Um, but but I think that. Uh, going through all of those processes and the legitimate due diligence uh, by at least two entities uh, that uh, have a formal review and approval, plus uh, you know meetings and discussions with employees and with the union workforce, and all of those things need to take place. The website that we've put out, the general public's interest, you know, something like this, I think, uh, could possibly. Uh, come to a conclusion and a close, I mean a real close, um, potentially by the end of the year. Um, I think that's a reasonable period of time. Hopefully I see some heads nodding in the, in the front row there. Uh, yeah, looks like a lot of head nodding going on. So, yeah, uh, it, that apparently is a reasonable time frame based on the head nodding. Yes, Mike. Sure. As you probably know, uh, City Council's lead, leading member on matters related to PGW, Councilwoman Tasco, who is a member of the Gas Commission, has already publicly said she opposes the sale. Other members have privately voiced at least skepticism about a sale. Uh, Local 686 has said that they plan on lobbying council members to oppose the sale, given all of that and the fact that council has retained or is going to retain its own consultants to even look at the, the question of whether it should be sold. Based on all that, have you met with council members privately? Are you going to do so? And do you think uh, this is going to be really a tough sell to, the, to those uh, lawmakers? Well, we have not met with council members yet. I did talk to President Clark on the phone yesterday, but we couldn't under the terms of our confidentiality agreement. We had a non-disclosure agreement with the city, which we honored. We were not going to talk to anybody about the process or about us prior to being selected. Now, going forward, certainly we're going to work with all the city council people. We understand they're an independent body, and they need to approve this transaction. So we will be working with all of them. And I know people have initially said they're against it, but they haven't seen the terms of the deal yet and what, what we're promising, what we're committed to in the asset purchase agreement which is very significant. And I think we met all of the city's requirements, plus some more that we put in. So I think it's a, it should be a positive for the city. And I think city council needs to take a look at it and make sure they're, a, a, we are addressing all the things they asked about. And that I think in the end, we should be, have a positive outcome. But the city council surely has to look at this. And we'll be working with them and meeting with them over the. Can I just clarify your commitment to maintaining the programs for low income? <coughs> Customers. Is that in perpetuity or is there a finite duration? As far as I'm concerned, it's as long as they're needed. We have the same type of programs in Connecticut with low income and uh, seniors in our t cities we operate in, in Bridgeport, New Haven, Hartford. So we have those same programs and uh, they're very productive. They're, they're good for the co community. So we would see those continuing. They're not limited. One is, of course, Mike, as you well know, one is required by the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission, and the other uh, is an ordinance uh, of uh, the city. Uh, there's uh, never been a moment uh, where either uh, of uh, those uh, vital programs or any of those vital programs uh, were ever uh, a topic of discussion other than, yes, they'll be maintained. So. You, sir, are you talking to me? Yes. Yes, when you look at, uh, when you get into the uh, finances uh, of it all, uh, you'll actually see, uh, we'd be glad to walk you through all that with uh, Rob DeBow and the team over there. That was a concern, obviously, of the city, uh, but when you look at the potential uh, infusion, that significant uh, level of infusion uh, into uh, the pension fund, uh, the numbers ultimately actually work uh, to our advantage uh, and can accelerate significantly uh, the city getting up into the uh, mid to high 70s, uh, close to 80% uh, funded uh, in the uh, 2030 uh, or the late uh, 2020s uh, time frame.
Yes. Yes. No. Uh, this is a uh, significant uh, company up in the New England section. They serve uh, between electric and gas over 700,000 customers. Uh, they are uh, well positioned uh, financially, a strong, a stable uh, company. Uh, with the board of directors that took this uh, transaction very, very seriously. Uh, and I think if you look at their track record and their growth model, uh, this is uh, pretty much a perfect alignment uh, for uh, their business model uh, and uh, the kind of partnership uh, that you would want uh, for a similarly sized uh, entity like PGW. If I heard you correctly, sometime into the 2020s, this should, the deal today handled down the line should fund 80% of the budget of the uh, uh, city's debt on the pension? No, what I said was if we're able to get uh, the level, uh, there's a range because there are a number of factors uh, that will impact that range, which we actually have uh, nothing to do with. Uh, you're talking about market conditions. You're talking about what's going on uh, in the stock and bond uh, market and a variety of other factors, which obviously we have no ability to control. But when you're in the 400 to $600 million range, uh, and even at the lower end, if we were able to infuse uh, that level of contribution to the city's pension fund, plus other things uh, that we would normally do, uh, with the pension fund and other uh, uh, other investments uh, that we anticipate making, hopefully in the future, uh, you could see uh, in, so I guess the quick math here is about, you know, 15, 16 years, uh, we would uh, potentially be in the high 70s uh, percent funded, uh, as compared to today, uh, where we're 48 uh, percent funded. Uh, on the city's pension fund. When you're up in the high 70s, close to 80, uh, in this environment, uh, that's a pretty healthy uh, pension fund, and you're significantly lessening uh, your unfunded liability. It is it is significantly helpful. Uh, there's no question about it, uh, and it was uh, certainly one of one of the uh, uh, main factors uh, in the decision process to even proceed uh, in a potential transaction, I mean, all the things that I went through with, with Dave in his question, uh, but there were a number of other concerns on the city side uh, because of the challenge that the city pension fund faces. And so when you're looking for a significant infusion of dollars, this particular transaction uh, is, uh, quite frankly, is about the only one. Uh, that uh, could produce those uh, those kinds of numbers uh, in such a relatively short period of time, without question. Where are you from, sir? Uh, city of Berkeley. Berkeley. Yeah. Sure. There are the opportunity with the uh, LNG facilities is that when you look at the requirements EPA now has on ships that need to be able to not pollute so much. They can't burn as much oil or fuel oil, diesel. So LNG could create an opportunity for the engines and the ships as they're being replaced to use LNG as a fuel for those ships. So, and Philadelphia is just ideally positioned. So the energy hub that the city is working on is going to be an ideal position for that. LNG is also being utilized. They've developed engines for trucks now that can run on LNG. So again, we can use the LNG facilities because we can uh, use it to create the liquid, the LNG, taking gas from the Marcellus Shale, taking gas into the city, converting it to a liquid, and then utilizing that in uh, engines. So I think that's an opportunity for us. And we probably will need to expand the LNG facility to be able to do more. So that's a business plan we're going to be working on with Craig and his team and figuring out how to do this better and creating, perhaps just creating more jobs and creating more opportunities for the energy hub in Philadelphia. Mayor, some of the city council have uh, requested to see all the different bids or at least the final bids to be able to compare when deciding whether to approve the transaction. Do you plan to make that information available to them? I expect that information will be available. <laughs> Thank you. 
council. I think if we give it to city council, I think it's going to be out in the public. So, uh, yes, it would just be a release. But, I mean, directly to the members and then, I mean, wherever else we might post it or put it or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Does the gas, commission, does the gas commission have a role in, in approving the sale? No. City Council and the PUC. Last question. Thank you all very much. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. We'll take a slight break and then uh, give you an update on uh, snow and weather and all those matters. <laughs>